Hello and welcome back to another Demis Helen tutorial. This is going to be a quick video, so we're not going to be doing the usual intro. We're just going to look at how to recreate Centurion, which is one of the presets from my new June 3 Transleads pack. If you haven't already seen that, you can see the video. It's posted just before this one. Or you can check the website out at demishelen.com forward slash shop. I'll leave the link in the description so you can take a look at that and listen to the audio demo. I've been working really hard on this pack and I think everything has come together really nicely. So hopefully we'll recreate one of these presets and you can have it for free. So Centurion is one of my favourite ones. So let's have a listen to this one. So if you're into that style lead, it's quite sort of modern but classic at the same time. It's just like a nice little hybrid. So we've got a copy here using an initialized patch. And to start with, I used the built-in vintage saw for this one. So just a little bit more rounded and it's not as sharp. But this consists of 11 voices. I'll leave it on linear. I'm going to just smidge down that detune a little bit and set the spread to 100%. And that makes sure that all the unison voices are spread out nice and even, and you just reduce the amount of issues that you can have by reducing the spread. From here, we use the CL Low Pass 12. So I'm just gonna bring this down to a level where we can just about hear it. And then we're gonna bring up the envelope amount using this shape here. So I'm gonna switch it to analog. bring up the attack and that starts to give you that classic sound that I used in this preset. And then just for now I'm going to turn the cutoff up and shape the amp. I'm going to bring the attack down a little bit more. I'm going to return the decay probably to 50 and sustain. I'll just leave somewhere here. I don't want it to be sort of fully sustained, but just dropping down to a level that's sort of audible, but not too audible, if you know what I mean. And release just a little bit up like we had. can hear we've got that sound already just using these 11 unison voices and it sounds really nice it's just got that nice soft texture to it like it's got somewhere to go so from here it's adding the extras in so we're going to add the LFO onto this and we're going to use an MSEG to create a little bit of pitch shifting as well and we'll uh, start with the LFO so on here I'm just going to push the rate up a little bit just a smidge and then we're going to use the amount to control how much of the fine tunes so I'm going to go up to fine tune right click modulate with and then we can go down to LFO one here and then with this we can just increase this to an acceptable level so I'm going to turn this on to zero and then increase it as it plays okay so seven seems okay turn on poly so we just get a little bit of independent modulation going on there per note and that sounds good to me okay so let's bring up the filter so we're going to attach this to the mod wheel for now so if we go to mod wheel and I'm just going to open it up to about 60% maybe something like that we can hear it at its open position Okay, so I've decided to increase it a little bit more. This isn't going to be exactly the same design, by the way. If you do want the exact sound, you can get that from the pack. But we're creating something that is very, very similar. So you can see just controlling the LFO and how much it sounds like it's a little bit too much out of tune, but that's going to add a lot of character to your tracks in the layering that you do there. Now, if it is a little bit too much, you can bring the amount down here, or we can just bring the amount down on the LFO. Just see that as a mix knob. Okay, so let's do a little bit of MSEG. So all we're going to do is create two points, like so. 
and then create a little blip like that. So it's a really sharp, so it's not going to be from 100% here, it's going to be sort of like that 60% mark, and that's going to be a sharp decay. And we can control the speed of this here, we don't need to set up anything else to trigger it in time or anything like that. And this gets attached to semitones, so modulate with MSEG1, and then we just bring up the amount here, set it to zero, let's play it. increase the rate. We want a click on the front of the sound, we don't want to hear the pitch shifting, we just want it to become an attack and more of a transient. If I just double click this to zero. Okay, I'm happy with that, that will do for now. So I'm gonna set this to voice one. So the reason we set that to voice one is because we're gonna add a second voice in this layer now. And that could come in the form of oscillator number two quite easily, but I'm gonna opt for a separate layer. So I'm gonna click here and drag up so we get two on the amount, and I'm gonna edit and solo the second voice, which is exactly the same as the first one. And you can't really tell the difference when we select the different voices, everything looks the same. But don't worry, as long as you've got number two selected, we can change this. So I'm going to change this here to a pulse. I'm going to bring this down to one voice. It doesn't matter about the spread, let's just reduce that. And let's have a listen to how that sounds now with this on it. But now if we select voice one, you can see that switches back to our super saw, essentially is what it is. And that switches to our pulse. Now, if we mix these back in, I'm going to hit solo voice one and two. Oh, it's too loud, so I'm going to reduce the volume of... Just... Okay, so that's still a little bit too loud, so voice two is going to be lowered, so we've still got it selected, and I'm going to bring down oscillator one on voice two. Hopefully you can hear that sound now coming through. And then on voice one, I'm just going to increase the noise a little bit. And if we go in here, we can see the noise is set to wide. I'm just going to put a high pass on there to about five or 600 hertz there. Maybe a bit higher. I thought 600 would do sufficiently, but we've gone straight up to about 4,000 hertz there, so four kilohertz mark. And then a bit of white noise there, just to brighten up the top end of our lead. The next thing to add is a little bit of velocity, so we can just select velocity in here, and then we can click and drag using the drag and drop, and drag it onto our filter. And that's going to let you hit the keys harder, and get the full filter, or a little bit less by hitting it more gently. But it's only plus 11, and it's enough to give some more depth. I'm going to hit oscillator number two, and I'm going to increase this to one, and just increase the mix. And I'm going to bring this up an octave. Just increasing a little bit more of the top end when the filter is open just to give it a little bit more edge over that so that's all the layers sorted so we can just now click all and unsolo them so we've just got everything going and we're going to hit effects bus one because everything is rooted through to effects one we haven't changed it from its default and we're going to start with compression so i'm actually going to drag compression to the beginning and I'm going to set this to air. So the reason I'm putting the compressor at the beginning is I don't want the compressor to affect the delay and the reverb that is coming after. If you want to actually compress the reverb and delay, then you're going to put reverb and delay before your compression. But I just want to use this to control the levels and add a little bit of air using the air mode. As 
there's only a smidge of reduction there. I'm not trying to make it obvious. I just want to make it as transparent as possible. So they're roughly the settings that I would use there. I'd come back and tweak them, obviously, till the preset was perfect. But that is going to be a good starting point. Now I'm going to put delay and activate this. I'm going to use the rhythmic delay just to get a little bit more out of it. And I'm going to shave the lows off to about 30 something percent. And for this one, we're going to leave them on eighth notes here. We're not going to change anything there. And I'm just going to increase the mod amount a bit. And shave the highs just a smidge. Beautiful. So we've left open the release on the sound. So when the filter opens up from a short release to a longer or slightly longer release, this is really going to aid the reverb that comes next. So we're going to use large hall and I'm going to set a little bit of pre delay. So it's going to let the synth, it's going to let the note come through before it starts applying reverb, keeping it a little bit brighter and stopping it getting cloudy and a little bit muddy. Time I'm going to bring down a little bit, and roll out the lows, it suits a higher colour, I want something that's bright and really accentuates the higher end and that's where we're going to use the high frequency dampening if we need to once we've set these up because they're quite intense. And finally, to compensate a little bit, I'm just going to boost the top end with a shelf. So I'm going to grab the frequency to about here and just push that shelf up just a smidge. And you can see there, plus 2 dB, I'm just going to say about 1.5. Just adds a little bit more sparkle to the lower portion. And we're going to do the same with the low shelf. So I'm going to bring it over so we've got sort of a nice wide sweep. And I'm just going to bring that down, say, a dB or so. So we've done like a little bit of a tilt. More bias towards the highs, less to the lows. I'm going to set the velocity curve here as well. I'm just going to bring that down so it's just a little bit more of a curve on it and it's more natural and we're not going to set anything up here with using what is in the mod matrix. I am going to set up one more MSEG though, MSEG 1 again, but we're going to go to oscillator semi so we can do this or we can just drag and drop here, but we're going to say voice 2 only. So you can see we set up that one for voice 1. I want plus 20 of that to be affected. But now I want the same MSEG to affect the second oscillator voice. And I want to do that a little bit less or a little bit more, depending on how it sounds. Let's have a listen. So I'm going to go for a little bit more on that one. And with these only being two singular waveforms, so we've got a square pulse and we've got the saw wave here. We're not going to hear too much, but just to add a little bit of extra on top. And I've pushed it a little bit further because it's not as obvious at the lower level. Finally, we have... there we are that is the preset complete it's not going to sound exactly the same and I know some people are going to go back and scrutinize and say it doesn't sound anything like it but I'm talking about the general style of the preset and how we get there and what we're using to get that sound and a combination of velocity control msegs on the semitones 
and the LFO controlling the fine tune, that's really what's pushing this sound. So if you want it to be more intense, push the amount up more on the LFO, push the amount up more on here, And that's going to give you a more intense feeling. We can push the MSEG harder on the first one. But again, it's really what you need in your track. It's all good and well making the sound out of context. But if you get into your track and you feel like the sound needs a little bit more attack, at least you know you can come in and alter the MSEG and push it a little bit harder to get a little bit more attack. So there we have it, that's the end of the tutorial. If you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing and drop me a comment if you have anything to ask about what you've seen in today's video. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next video.